Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. In this video we're going to be talking about a pretty cool new piece of software that I actually really like. I'm going to be doing a full review for the brand new Topaz Photo AI software. If you guys have been following my channel for long you probably have seen a lot of other reviews for the Topaz software and generally the things that they are coming out with, the software that they're producing is really 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 great stuff. Topaz Photo AI is no different. I'm going to show you guys what all this software is capable of and you guys can check Check out this video and see if maybe the software is the right fit for you guys before you pick it up. I've also included a little link down below where you can pick up Topaz Photo AI uh, right now for about the next week or so. It is on sale. Uh, if you're watching this video after it's a few days after it's came out, it might not be on sale anymore, um, but keep your eyes peeled. Use the link down below. You can always check to see if there is a sale, but it is a really, really, really great piece of software. I'm going to show you guys all that it can do. I've got three example photos. Let's go ahead and jump right in there, guys. So the first thing I want to show you about Topaz Photo AI is how easily it can launch from within something like Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever you're using, it can easily launch in here. So right now uh, I'm in Lightroom. You can see I'm in the develop tab. I already made some adjustments here, did some edits, and now I want to launch this into Topaz Photo AI. Now the reason why I want to launch this into Photo AI is because when you zoom in here, once this loads out, you will notice that the tree is not really in focus. Um, and the leaves aren't really in focus. Unfortunately, I kind of focused for the background. So I want to fix that. Also, you can see there's a little bit of noise that I want to clean up here. So overall, I just want to do a basic cleanup job. Now, if you're not a landscape photographer, stick around because I'm going to show you guys a couple other examples a little bit later in this video. So we're going to go up to photo. We're going to go down to edit in and we are going to go to Topaz Photo AI. Now you have some options here. Usually I just do edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, TIFF, Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits of component, 300 on the resolution with no compression. Go ahead and hit edit. Now you should see once you do that, it's gonna prepare the file for editing. After it is done preparing the file for editing, you will see Topaz Photo AI is going to open up. Now you can see how quickly that opened up here. Now when you first start, your view is probably gonna look something like this, where you have one photo on the left and one on the right. Now the one on the left is going to be the before photo, the one on the right is gonna be after. You can definitely do it that way if you want, but I much prefer to use this option right here, which gives you a slider bar in the center. So select that, then every time you load in after that, as long as you don't change it, it will load in just like this with this slider bar in the middle. Benefit of the slider bar is you can slide it back and forth to see before and after. So the big thing about Topaz AI is that it fixes your photo in autopilot because it has a lot of AI things that do some selection. So while I was talking, it did a few things. Um, first thing is it detected a subject. Uh, on a landscape photo where I kind of want everything in focus, I'm not really going to worry too much about that subject. In fact, I'm going to turn it off in just a second, but I'll show you guys a little bit later on a photo where there is a subject where you would want to worry about that. And you can see that it is using autopilot settings. So the autopilot thinks it just needs to remove high luminance noise. You can see it's already checked on. Um, it's already it's preset all these settings for me. I didn't go in and set these before. This is just the settings that the software determined this photo needed. I'm actually going to scroll on the image because I want to be looking more at the tree here. And I'm going to zoom in to 200%. And every time you move it, it will have to re-render. So you can see it's going to re-render over here. Now we can swipe left and right. So you can see it's done a decent job of removing the noise over here. Um, but it hasn't really sharpened the tree. And I want it to also sharpen the tree. So what I'm going to do is go down here where it says sharpen and I'm going to check the box. Now previously in the software that they had before there was Topaz Sharpen AI, Topaz Denoise and Topaz Gigapixel. You had to use a combination of all three of these to achieve the desired result. Whereas now you have basically everything that you had in all three of those softwares put into one program in Topaz Photo AI. Now that I've done this, um, you can see now we have sharpened the photo. I'm not really liking what it's doing. A lot of times it does a really good job, but like over here, it's kind of softening things up. By default, uh, it's going to sharpen subject only. On a landscape photo where I want most, most of my image to be sharp, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to change it to lens blur because this is lens blur. It's not motion blur. The tree is not moving. It's just that I simply missed my focus point because I focused on the background. So now that that loads out, you can see it's done a lot better job here. And again, left of the line is before, right of the line is after. So you can see, especially on these leaves, look at the difference that this makes. And I've done a few different modifications here, but for the most part, I haven't done a whole lot. I haven't touched the remove noise at all. 
I feel like it's doing a pretty good job. I might want to zoom out just a little bit, get a little bit wider of a view. Now, it's doing both of these things. Um, even though it's detected a subject, I'm not too worried about it because the only thing that uses the subject in this example would be sharpen if I had this box checked on, which it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as is. Now, the other two options, or three options rather, that you have here, you have the option to recover faces. Obviously, there's no face in my scene, so I'm not gonna bother with that. You can enhance the resolution and you can upscale. So enhancing the resolution and upscale go hand in hand. You wanna use enhanced resolution when you upscale in order to give your image a little bit more resolution. For this example, I don't need to upscale it at all because I have the full resolution raw file, um, but it, let's say I had a photo that was a little bit smaller, like let's say it was 2,000 pixels wide and I wanted to print it large, then I would use this. I'm going to show you guys that example right after this. So one last time, I'm going to show you the before and after. Left is before, right is after. You can see it's really cleaned up my image really, really nicely. and. It was super simple and easy to use. So now you can just go ahead and click save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. If you launch this from Photoshop or On One or Luminar or whatever you launched it from, it's gonna say save back to whatever the program you launched it from was. So you can go ahead and hit that button and it will save right back over. Now let's look at another photo here that's gonna to be too small if we wanted to upsize it. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I went ahead and exported this photo as a 2000 pixel width, which is a lot smaller than the normal roughly 6000 that my camera gets. Um, so all I wanna do here is upsize this. I wanna show you guys kind of the ability that you have to upsize in this software. First of all, I'm gonna turn off remove noise because I don't wanna do any noise reduction or sharpening. I just want to enhance the resolution. And I also need to zoom in a little bit because if you're looking at this on YouTube, especially if you're watching in 1080p or lower, you're probably looking at this thinking the resolution looks fine, Austin, what are you doing? So let's go ahead and zoom in to maybe 400%. And now you can see the resolution is definitely a little low once you zoom in compared to the original file, at least where I could literally see the little pine needles here on this tree. So what I wanna do is check enhance resolution, make sure it's on low resolution, and then I wanna upscale. Let's say that I wanted to four times upscale it, which is gonna make it 8,000 width, 5332 height. I'm gonna zoom out here because we don't need to be quite so tight anymore. And let's see how this looks. So you can see that it's still low resolution because it's loading. You can always see if it's loading um, down here on the bottom. If this bar is going across, you can see it says enhancing. So it's still working. Every time you move the screen, it will have to reload out. Um, so don't worry too much about that. And it does take just a second here. If you're on one of the new Apple computers, it's gonna run a lot faster. I am not on one of the new ones, unfortunately. I'm on a 2014 iMac, so it's running a little bit slower. So now you can see left side over here is before, right side is after. As I slide this bar, you can see how this tree gains a lot of resolution. So you can see how that would really help you if you had only a low resolution image, or let's say you shot it on an old camera, lower resolution camera, whatever it is, this is gonna help you to upsize it in order to print it, to post it to social media, to post it on your website, whatever you wanna do, this is gonna allow you to do it. It does a really nice job. And again, all I did here was enhance the resolution and upscale. I could go ahead and hit save image to save that image back to the desktop, which is where I launched it from. Let's look at one more photo here that's gonna be helpful for some of you guys that don't shoot landscapes. All right, so here is a photo that's pretty noisy and it does have a subject in it because I've focused on myself here holding this tripod. The background is blurred out or bokeh basically uh, and it is pretty noisy. So this is gonna cover a lot of different things that this software does. You can see up here right now, it's detecting a subject, recovering a face, removing high luminance noise. The software is doing a lot as we talk right now. Um, and again, depending on what size your photo is, what kind of machine you're running, this is gonna go slower or faster. Um, but so you can see we've got a lot going on right now. Now already I haven't done anything other than just load the photo into the software. Everything it's done has been automatic as I've just been sitting here talking and it's already removed quite a bit of noise. I'll show you guys again here. So this is already what it's done without me doing a dang thing. I haven't done anything other than open this photo here. Now we can refine this and get even better results if we want. So Right now you can see it's not recovering a face. I don't know how well it's gonna recover this face, but we can try this. 
So because it's just the side of my face and I'm looking away, I'm not going to bother doing any face recovery, um, but we will go through and remove the noise and sharpen. So you can see right now it's using the autopilot settings, which was remove noise. It's done strong at 66 strength. Now we can also sharpen this as well if we want it. It honestly probably looks fine as is, but let's go through and sharpen it just for the heck of it. Um, to see if we can make this look a little bit better. So we'll click that, let it load out. I also think I want to reduce the amount of noise it's reducing. Uh, we'll try about 50 and see how that looks. So we're going to do two things at once here, let it load out, and then we'll see how it looks. Again, I like using this slider bar, but if you are a before and after on the left and right kind of person, you can use this view right here. It's gonna take a second, the more things that you tell it to do, you can see it's still loading out right here. So after it loads out, you can see that it's kind of almost over sharpened, especially like around here is a little too sharp for me. So we can simply just click and drag the strength down and let it re-render out again. Um, now, the other thing that is key here is that we're using subject only. This is very important on a photo like a portrait or a, or a photo of a person, as opposed to a landscape where I wanna sharpen the whole thing. Here, I just want to sharpen the subject, which is me holding this tripod. Now, when you hover over subject only down here or subject up here, you can see the red is the subject. So it's done a pretty good job of selecting me. I'm gonna show you guys how to refine that in just a second here once the sharpening loads out. Um, but it usually does a really good job selecting the subject. Basically, it's just trying to figure out what's already partially sharp in the image so that you can continue sharpening that. Because again, we don't wanna put just a generic base sharpening over the whole image or it's not gonna work very well. So that's looking a little bit better for my liking. Let's go ahead and refine the subject here. It's already done a pretty good job, but I will show you how to refine it so that if you do have issues, you know how to refine it yourself. Let's go ahead and hit refine up here. And now we have some options. I'm gonna leave it in default, but I'm gonna adjust the sensitivity. I like the softness around 20. That basically just affects how hard the edge is. 20 feels like a good spot. And we can bring the sensitivity up. Now, if I go too far, you're gonna see it's gonna select way too much in the image. I really don't want that much of the image being selected. So let's go ahead and drop it back down to, let's try 60. You can see that it's still probably a little too much at 60. How about 57? And I wanna find something, yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's not sharpening too much outside the image. Let's go ahead and hit done, and we will just make sure that it's not too sharp on the edges, but I think that it's gonna look all right here. All right, and then now that that's loaded out, one last time we will toggle before and after. I think it's looking pretty great. Um, honestly, much, much better than when it started. You can see just how much noise it removed. So easy to use. Um, they really, really hit the nail on the head here with this software. I really, really like it. So there you guys have it. That is Topaz Photo AI. What a great piece of software. I really, really, really like it. I wanted to let you guys know this video is not sponsored, but if you do want to pick up this product, please use my link down below. It gets me a really, really, really small kicker, um, and it lets them know that I sent some traffic their way. Now, again, I'm not being sponsored or paid to make this video. I just honestly think it's a really, really great piece of software. There's tons of great softwares out there that I could send you guys links to pick up, little affiliate links, but this is the one that I'm choosing because it is a great piece of software. Software. It's going to do great things for you guys, and I really think that you ought to have it. Whether you're a landscape, portrait, cityscape, any other kind of photographer, it's a really helpful piece of software, and it works as a plugin with most photo editors. So, however, you're editing your photos now, this software will likely work as a plugin to seamlessly work with your current workflow. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me to grow my channel, and I really appreciate it. And I always look forward to reading your guys' comments. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.